Hi, I'm Rosella Erler. Hi, I'm Stephanie Murphy. And this is The Cold Brew Truth. Welcome to our podcast. So we want to do an intro video for those of you who are new and joining along and just might not really those know who, who don't we are. Know us. Yeah. And those who do know us, um, well, you know parts of us, but Maybe I know not all fact. the silly little details. Yeah, only very few people really know like the like the deep right parts. So that's what you call it, but whatever. We're going to make light of it really quickly, (laughs) just so you guys have the rundown about each of us and just a quick backstory. So, do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? Go first. (laughs) Okay, I'll let you do this. I'm Zella. I'm Canadian. I was raised in the United States by a single parent. My grandparents played a huge role in my life. My biological father was not in the picture. He stayed in Canada. My mom came back to the States. May have been some legal reasons why he wasn't allowed here. Why is that? Well, my friends, he's a convicted child rapist, so the United States doesn't like those. He stayed in Canada. (laughs) So not funny, but So not funny. So, I grew up in Hilliard, which is considered the hood of Spokane, Washington. I don't think it was back then. I think it is more so now, but maybe it was then. I don't really know. It's up to you to judge. I never thought that it was the hood. (laughs) Anyways, I graduated from Rogers High School, and that's basically my childhood in a little nutshell. What about you, Steph? Well, um, so I'm Steph, and I was born in Spokane Um, at the time. My mom was married to husband number three. She didn't have like the best of luck. Um, and she already had my two older sisters. Off. And uh, well, let's just say I was not a planned child or a wanted child. So um, basically when I was a few months old, um, my mom had to leave the area for safety reasons as well. It's weird, we didn't even notice about each other until later on. But we have very similar like yeah. child backgrounds as far as parental. Yeah. So my bio, uh, bio Brad, that's what I call him. He, uh, he was an abusive piece of shit and basically tried to kill my mom. And then later on the court system didn't really do us much justice. And although we ended up on the other side of the state, um, I kind of spent my time back and forth, unfortunately, um, minimally over here, but I had to. But seriously, by the grace of God, my mom ended up meeting my dad, or who I refer to as my dad, because he came into the picture when I was just before a year old. Um, And he helped my mom um, kind of get her feet under her, and they got married, and they're still married to this day. Um, So he's raised me, and I spent the majority of my childhood uh, in a small town called Stanwood, which is like a small little farming community um, north of Seattle and ended up graduating high school um, from a small little school over there. And then by way of nature, ended my happy ass back over here. Ta-da, and here we are. That's how we ended up in Spokane. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, okay, so then once we got to Spokane, um, you graduated, then what was your career status like? I graduated high school. I had worked all the way through high school for the city. I went out and got a barista job at the airport when I was 19. Um, My job at the airport was my first real adult job and I loved it. However, I learned a lot from other adults coming and going through the airport. The airport sees all types of people, big and small. Um, Big and small big and small and all shapes and colors let me tell you what Uh, I was out there for about three years uh, and during that I guess I went through like kind of a learning relationship and then I was lucky enough to meet my husband and then I was like peace out airport and then I started my world in sales for Nissan and that's pretty much it as far as working for a short little bit there and then I became a stay-at-home wife and mother. Pretty, pretty, pretty mellow, easy adulthood. That's good though, gave you a little bit of a break. Not really, there was a lot of learning lessons in there. Those are just like some of the smaller details. Little highlights. 
Yeah, just little highlights. Um, Mine was boring for that section. Let's hear yours. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was a little spicier. Um, I grew up an athlete um, playing soccer and was college bound um, through some scholarship offers, but ended up in the mix of um, on one of my visits over here with the bio side of the family was introduced um, to a gentleman. I shouldn't even call him that. That's being gracious. I was introduced to a dude um, that I had no business being introduced to. But then he pursued me, and then that basically made me derail my entire life plan um, and ended up coming back literally three days after I graduated from high school. Technically, I still wasn't even a legal adult at that point. But I had um, several jobs lined up for myself and a place lined up for myself. And again, come to find out when you're not a legal adult, uh, you can't rent an apartment. So he had to move out of his parents' basement. He was much older than me. <laughs> And then that started my um, career endeavors where um, I was a barista as well. It was one in high school. We like coffee, can't you tell? Totally love coffee. Yeah. Um, and worked for a couple of different awesome little places in Spokane. I typically would run with two or three jobs at a time because, well, I had lots of time on my hands and I like to make money. So Yeah, do it. Yeah. Um, I normally was a barista and then found myself in some sort of a sales position, um, firstly basically selling jewelry. Um, and I did really, really well with that. Um, ended up pregnant. Like sales? Yep, so sales, selling jewelry. It was, yeah, that was a fun job. Um, I love diamonds. Diamonds and cars, baby. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have both got a history. Let's just, we're gonna do a quick recap. Yeah. Similarities here. We like coffee. We mm -hmm. thrive in sales. Yep. We're busybodies. We're doers. We're both mamas. Mamas. We have fucked up biological fathers <laughs> who did not play a role in our lives. But how, so, how now in our days it's even a topic to discuss because it does play a role more than yeah. one would like to mention. It's not really fun to actually even have to talk about or share. But it's, it's really awkward. It's the truth. So It's the cold brew truth. Do you yeah. know how many times as a child when someone's like, where's your dad? Well, uh, should be in prison, but he's not. Yeah. <laughs> I thankfully had a stepdad who was rad, and I just always called him my dad, so I got to kind of grow lucky. up with that. But yeah, the other one definitely made life a bit of a challenge for sure. Yeah. But yeah. So that was our early 20s. Probably a lot of um, learning lessons in there, I would have yeah. to say. And then, I don't know if you can tell or not, but we're in our 30s now. <laughs> kind of old bitches. Anyways, approaching closer to my 40s than you are. But that's okay. Jeez. I know. That's really weird <laughs> to think about. <laughs> uh, so, 20s of... was like a rough go for us for learning, obviously. And we just kind of, again, being the doers that we are. Being moms and then navigating, yep. trying to work while keeping that work-life balance. I would say twenties for me were really important learning lesson-wise, as far as what a healthy relationship for a male figure would look like. I would say, and what it doesn't look like. I probably learned more of what it wouldn't look like than what it should look like. I feel like I'm still learning what that relationship um, guideline looks like, but. That was for sure a big part of my 20s is learning what I would tolerate as a human and yeah. as a, um, just a lady. lady. I was married, had two children, and divorced by the time I was 24, 23, 24. So our like paths look a little different. Similar, but so, a little different. yeah, my early 20s taught me a lot, and they also um, very much so highlighted stuff. Highlighted what I would tolerate and what I would not tolerate. And I realized I have a really high tolerance for bullshit. And then all of a sudden... But at the same time we're like, we don't have to fall out for any bullshit. No, not anymore. Because then I learned like, oh, wait a minute, that's not normal. That's what happened in your 30s. Yeah. Is you like that realize switch. I'm not tolerating this bullshit any longer. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we are. Yeah. We're in the, we're not tolerating the bullshit part of life anymore. 
and we wanted to share that part of life because there's so many of you that are in that part of life as well. It's so fun. So fun. Oh, man, I always do this. I'm on the wrong side. You need gas. That old man looks like he's either I pee or he's he, freezing. I'm going to go with he's going to pee his pants. Okay. <laughs>